Exercise 5.2. In this exercise, we'll consider the same thermocouple as exercise 5.1. The difference is now we're going to allow for radiation exchange between the walls and the thermocouple. The temperature wall of the wall are, is given as 400 Celsius, and the emissivity of the bead is given as 0.9. The first task is to determine the temperature that is reached at a steady state conditions. The second task is to determine how long it takes the thermocouple to go from its initial condition of 25 Celsius to a temperature that is within 1 Celsius of its steady state value. This problem is going to be divided in two uh, sections. One is going to be a steady and the other one is going to be a non-steady condition. We are going to consider radiation and conduction. However, we're going to neglect conduction within the thermocouple. We start our analysis by balance of energy. We know that the energy going in minus the energy leaving has plus the energy that is generated has to be equal to the energy change stored. Since we are looking for a steady state temperature, we neglect this term at this moment and we do not have energy generation, therefore we have this term equal to zero. Therefore, the energy going in minus the energy living is equal to the energy out. Please note that in this case, the amount of net radiation has to be equal to the amount of convection. Therefore, we could write that the amount of radiation surface that is going to basically go in from the surface into the body minus the amount of convection going in to infinity has and if we multiply both of this by as has to give us zero now we need to determine the value of this temperature notice that this temperature has a fourth degree in this term and a first degree in this term to solve it by hand is very difficult so we're going to solve it using MATLAB. This type of problems could be solved numerically in MATLAB using two different methods. The first method is to use anonymous functions and F0. The second method is to use symbolic math and solve. So the first one that we have set up over here is anonymous functions. Notice that we have uh, set up all the constants in our problem and then we define the function as a function of t since that's what we're looking for and we write the equation exactly as we had derived it previously we define so we're going to solve for a temperature in kelvins we're going to use the function f0 of this function f and the initial guess that we're going to use is t infinity notice that you could use any value for t um, except zero and one way that you could find that initial value is by plotting this function and guess a estimation from the plot of when the intercept is going to be. Once we have the temperature in Kelvin, we're going to get a temperature in Celsius. So if we run this program, we see that the temperature in Kelvin is around 4.91 and in Celsius is around uh, 2.18. If we do the same process for symbolic math, the first thing that you have to do is set up uh, T as a symbol. We enter all the constants in the same way. We define the function uh, as a symbolic function, not as an anonymous, and we do the same process. The only difference is in this case, we use in solve, and because this is a fourth degree polynomial, it's going to give us four roots. Um, and then we have to determine the one that it will be useful um, that we're going to use. Notice that once again, we get four different roots. The last two, since they are multiplied by i, they are imaginary roots. Therefore, we cannot use. And the second root notice that is negative, and that is impossible for us since we have Kelvin, and Kelvin cannot be negative. So the only we could choose is the first one. And it's exactly the same result that we had um, using Epsilon. Once again, if we subtract 273 to the first one, this is the value that we obtain. For the second part of the problem, we have to once again do a balance of energy. The only difference is that we're going to consider the unsteady part of the equation. So we have the energy going in 
minus the energy leave-in is going to be equal to the energy that is uh, being stored. So once again, we have that is epsilon sigma T surrounding minus T to the fourth and then minus H T minus T infinity multiplied by AS that is going to be equal to the density, the volume, and capacity times the T temperature and time. We are going to collect all these constants and we're going to rename them as C1 is equal to simply AS divided by rho BC. So at the end, the final equation that we're going to gonna use is going to be epsilon sigma t surrounding to the four t to the fourth minus h t minus t infinity c1 is equal to dt dt notice that in order to solve for the time we need to find the temperature as a function of time to be able to get to the desired um, temperature that we need to reach. The, or in order to do this mathematically, it's a little bit involved. So the only way that we could do it is by using numerical integration. To do that, we're going to replace dt to be equal to simply delta t, in which we have a final minus initial. And basically, we're just going to represent it as a t new minus a t old. And we're going to represent delta t simply as a delta t in this form. If we substitute all these quantities into the main equation, we're going to find out that t nu is going to be equal to t old minus c1 delta t. And then we're going to have h. And then this t that we're going to find is going to be t old minus t infinity minus epsilon sigma t surrounding to the four minus t old to the four. And this is the equation that we're going to use in MATLAB. We need to know for this uh, progression that we're going to start with the initial temperature of 25 Celsius. We are going to use a delta time of 0 0.01. You can start with any delta Ts and we're gonna do a couple of tests about them. And the temperature that we need to reach, it says that is about one Celsius from the steady state condition. Steady state condition was 2.18.7 so we're going to do one before celsius before is going to be 217.7 celsius and we're going to show how this process is done in math to solve this type of numerical equations we need to set up a while loop the reason we have a while loop is we need to run it as long as a condition is met in this case we run until the temperature that we're calculating reaches a temperature goal of 217.7 Celsius. The first task is to um, add all the constants that we have in our problem. Then we set up the goal. We write it in terms of Kelvin. Since we're going to do radiation, we have a value of delta T and all the constants. The starting time has to be zero. And then we have a temperature old, which is the initial condition, which we have it at 25 Celsius. Once again, we add 273 to indicate that is Kelvin. The initial uh, value of T nu is going to be zero. We just need to initialize this part. For the while loop, you need to always write a condition to see, to evaluate the quantity that you are going to uh, develop inside of the loop and your goal. Please note that this condition must always be true. Therefore, it should return a one if you execute it. In this case, the temperature nu we have is zero and the goal is 273. So clearly T nu is less than the goal. And that's what we want to we want to make sure that the loop 
runs. So we want this condition to always be true. Always ensure that at least one of the terms that is in the condition has to be changed inside of the loop. Notice that in this case, we have T nu being changed uh, by this form. And this formula is the one that we develop by hand. So we have this formula and notice that the value of T is considered to be the T old. So we're gonna calculate a T new, and the first iteration is going to be based on 25. Then a new value of T new is going to be used and is going to be updated. Notice that we have an update over here. So the new value that we get is going to become the old value for the next iteration. We also are required to update the time to keep track of how the time changes. Notice that the time changes to the current time plus delta T. We execute this and we calculate the final value. So the final value is going to be the last T that we obtain minus 273. So we could see it in Celsius. The final time is going to be T minus DT. The reason we have to subtract the DT is because the value of T that is reached is at this step and the new um, updated time is done by adding DT. However, this dt, this t value is used for the next iteration, which we are not going to reach. Since we're going to state at this iteration, we need to subtract the value of dt to give us an actual uh, value. We execute this, and we're going to see that once we run the loop, the final temperature is 217.7, which is actually the goal, and the time that it takes is 4.91 seconds. Please make sure that you're able to set up uh, a proper while loop with the conditions that are provided in here and do it um, on your own time because this is going to be very important.